Hey guys, Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. Here in today's video, it's kind of like a follow-up to last week's video where we talked about triads and how I said in last week's video, triads are everywhere. It's like the fundamental backbone of basically all music. So if you haven't seen that video already, definitely check that one out. So in today's video, we're gonna take things a step further by taking basic bar chords and voicing them in several different ways. So we're gonna start out just by looking at the triads and a few different things you can do with the basic triads, but then we're gonna start adding layers to it. We're gonna add the seventh onto it and then we're gonna add the ninth onto it. The main thing that I want you to understand here, this is super, super important. I stress this point in many, many videos. Understand the function of the chord within the key that you're playing in. We're in the key of C major here. So know what the one chord is, know what the two chord is, the three, four, five, and six chord. Know what each chord is because whatever you do to the five chord in the key of C major is going to work for the five chord in the key of G major is going to work on the five chord in the key of A major. Whatever you do to one specific chord based on the function that it is for the key that you're in is going to work for all of the keys. That is super, super important. If that doesn't make sense right now, just keep watching this video and you're gonna see what I'm talking about as this lesson goes on. So always be aware of the function of the chord in the key. So we played that chord progression. So instead of playing them in this open position down here, I instead played the four chord like this. And then I played the one chord like this. Then I played the five chord like this. Six chord. Four chord. One chord. And then three chord made into a major chord. So no matter which one of the 12 key signatures you're in, the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord are always going to be major triads. The two, three, and the six chord are always going to be minor triads. So the one, four, and five chord in this key are the C major chord, the F major chord, and the G major chord. Then you have your two, which is the D minor chord, the six, which is the A minor chord, and then the three, which is the E minor chord, but we're making that into a major three chord. So it's very common to take the minor three chord of a key and make it into a major chord. So that's done all the time. I even have a lesson that's all about doing that. It's called my favorite chord. It's about taking a minor three chord and making it into a major three chord and just seeing how it affects the sound. If you wanna check that lesson out, I'll post a link to that below. So starting out on this F major chord, which is the four chord of this key, which is a major chord, we just played the one, three, five here. We then moved to the C major chord, which is the one chord of the key, which is a major chord. We played the one, three, five here. We then moved to the G major chord, which is the five chord of this key, which is a major chord, and we played the one, three, five here. We then moved to the A minor chord, which is the six chord of this key, which is a minor chord, and we played the one flat three, five right here. The chord progression went back around, four chord, one chord, and then the three chord, which we made major, is right here. This is an E major chord, so here's your one, three, and five. So that note right there, the major third of this chord, is the note that causes this chord to be considered an outside chord. So now we're going to take each of these chords and we're going to drop the fifth. If you're going to drop any interval in a chord, the fifth is usually the first one to go. So instead of doing one, three, five, we're going to be playing one, three, and then we're going to be playing a one in the next octave higher. So let's look at that. So the four chord, F major, one, three, one. C major, one chord, one, three, one. G major, five chord, one, three, one. 
A minor chord, 6 chord, 1 flat 3, 1. Back to the 4 chord, 1 3 1. 1 chord, 1 3 1. Major 3 chord, 1 3 1. We're going to keep the one and the three, but instead of adding the one again in the higher octave, we're now going to add the three again in a higher octave. So four chord, one, three, three. One chord, one, three, three. Five chord, one, three, three. Six chord, one, flat three, flat three. Four chord, one, three, three. One chord, one, three, three. Three chord, one, three, three. So now we're just adding an additional note to each of these triads. So instead of just the one, three, and the five, or in the case of minor chords, instead of the one, flat three, and the five, we're now adding the seven in. So the triad is the most important part of these chords. The next most important part of the layer is the seventh. For the purposes of this lesson, there's two different types of sevenths. There is a major seventh, and then there's a minor seventh. A major seventh can always be found one half step below the one, or one half step below the root note, and a minor seventh can always be found one whole step below the root, or one whole step below the one. Anytime a chord contains a major seventh, it's going to say M-A-J in the chord symbol. Anytime you see a chord that says M-A-J in it, mage, that is referring to the type of seventh that is in the chord. That is not referring to the type of triad that the chord is. A C mage seven means that it is a C major triad with a major seven interval added onto the major triad. A C seven means that a minor seven is added onto a C major triad. All right, that is very, very important to understand. So mage in the chord symbol is always referring to the type of seven. So this chord progression started on the F major chord, which is the four chord of this key signature. The four chord of any key is always going to be a major seventh type of chord. So we have our one, we have our three, and we're gonna add our major seven here. A major seven interval is always one half step lower than the one. So you know if that's the major seven, you know you're only one half step away from an F, and there's the F right there. So one, three, major seven. It then moves to the one chord. The one chord of this key is the C major chord. The one chord of any key signature is always going to be a major seventh type of chord. So again, it's going to maintain that same shape. We have our one, we have our three, we have our major seventh right here. You know if that's a major seventh, you know you're only one half step away from a C. And there's a C right there. It then moves to the G major chord. The G major chord is the five chord of this key signature. The five chord of any given key signature is always going to be a major triad. And if you add the seventh on there, it's going to have that minor seventh on there. It's not a major seventh, it's a minor seventh. Putting this all together, taking a major triad and a minor seventh, you have what is known as a dominant chord. The five chord in any given key signature is a dominant seventh type of chord if you play it in its seventh form. In triad form alone, it's a major chord. In seventh form, it is a dominant seventh chord, otherwise known as just a G7 chord. So for this chord, we have a one, a three, and then a minor seven. Now a minor seven is always gonna be a whole step away from the one. So if you go a whole step higher than that, you know that you're gonna be on a G and that is the note G. It then moves to the A minor chord, which is the sixth chord of this key. So in triad form alone, this is a minor triad. Adding the seventh on there, it's a minor seventh added on there. Not a major seventh added on there, it's a minor seventh added on there. 
There is such a thing as an A minor major seven chord, but right now we're just playing an A minor seven chord. So that means you take your A minor triad and you add a minor seven onto it. So we're gonna take the one, the flat three, because it's a minor triad and not a major triad. And then we're gonna add the minor seven on there as well. So a minor seven interval, otherwise known as a flat seven interval, is always one whole step lower than the one. So if there's that minor seven interval right there, you know the A is right here. And that is the note A. So the progression goes back around again. So it's on the F major chord. That is the four chord of the key. The four chord is always a major seven chord. So one, three, seven is what we're doing for that. It then goes to the C major chord, which is the one chord. The one chord of any given key signature is always going to be a major seventh. So one, three, seven, we're doing for that. It then moves to this E major chord, which is the three chord, which again, we made into a major chord. The only difference between a major chord and a minor chord is that third. So we have our one, we have our major third. And then the type of seventh that gets added to the three chord of the key is always going to be a minor type of seventh. So we have our one, we have our three, and then we have this flat seven or this minor seven right here. So this is what I mean by always being aware of the chord's function within the key. So it doesn't matter what key you're in, the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord are always gonna be major triads. The two chord, the three chord, and the six chord are always gonna be minor triads. There is a seventh chord, and that is a diminished triad. We're not using any diminished chords in this lesson. I'm only focusing on the first six. I'm focusing on the major triads and then the minor triads. But this works for any key. The one, four, and five chord, always major. Two, three, six, always minor. We are making that one alteration. We're taking the three chord and we're making it into a major chord just because it sounds cool. Just because something theoretically should be in key versus not being in key doesn't mean that these rules aren't broken all the time. You need to understand the rules and then you can consciously break the rules, all right? So we're taking this three chord, this diatonic minor three chord, and we're made into a major chord. So then when you go and look at these chords in their seventh form, the one chord and the four chord always contain a major seventh interval, and then all the rest of the chords contain a minor seventh interval. That's why I knew that that F major chord, which is the four chord of this key, contains a major seventh interval. That's why I knew the C major chord, which is the one chord of this key, contains a major seventh interval. That's why I knew that all of the rest of the chords, the G major chord, the A minor chord, the E chord, even though we made it major, that doesn't change the fact that it still has a minor seventh interval. Only the one chord and the four chord have a major seventh interval. All of the rest of the chords have a minor seventh interval. So then the final thing we did was we went and added the nine. So you have the triad portion of the chord. That's the first layer. You then have the seventh. That's the next layer. We then added the ninth. This is yet another layer. This is a color tone. So all of that stuff underneath is super, super important. That's the fundamental stuff. Which chords are made major? Which chords are made minor? Which chords get a major seventh interval added to them? Which chords get a minor seventh interval added to them? Knowing all that stuff, you can then add these little color tones to them. And that's all we're doing here by adding the nine. We're just adding in one extra note on there, the nine. So anytime you see a nine, you can always think that's the same thing as a two. It's the same note. Two, nine, same thing. So a two is always going to be the note that is one whole step higher than the one. So let me just show you. So for this first chord here, this F major chord, which is the four chord of the key, we have our one. We have our major third. We have our five. So we're dropping the five, we're adding in that major seven, which we did before. How do we know it gets a major seven and not a minor seven? It's because it's the four chord. The four chord of the key always gets a major seven. So root, major third, major seven, and then the nine, which means the same thing as the two, is always gonna be one whole step higher than the one. So if we know our one is here, there's that nine, that two. So one, three, major seven, nine. 
We then move down to the C chord, which is the one chord of this key. In triad form, it's a major triad. So it's a one, a three, and a five. We're dropping the five, we're adding the seven. What kind of seven is it? Is it a major seven? Is it a minor seven? Well, knowing that this is the one chord of the key lets us know that it gets a major seven. So a one, a major three, and a major seven. Then we're going to add the nine. So the nine is always going to be one whole step higher than the one. One is here, nine is there. One, major three, major seven, nine. Coming down to the G chord, which is the five chord of this key. The five chord in triad form is always a major triad. One, major three, five. Instead of playing the five, we're playing the seven. What kind of seven is it? Well, it's not the one chord, it's not the four chord, so it doesn't get a major seven. It gets a minor seven. So here's your one, here's your major three, here's your minor seven. Then we want to add in the nine. The nine is always a whole step higher than the one. Here's the one, here's the nine. So then we move on to the A minor chord. The A minor chord is the sixth chord in this key. The sixth chord in triad form is always a minor triad. So we have a one, we have a minor third, and we have a five. We're gonna drop the five, we're gonna add the seven. What type of seventh is it? Well, this isn't the one chord of this key, this isn't the four chord of this key, it's the sixth chord of this key. The one chord and the four chord get a major seventh, everything else gets a minor seventh. So this chord's gonna get a minor seventh as well. So we have our one, we have our minor third, and we have our minor seventh. And then we're gonna add the nine, which is a whole step higher than the one. There's your A minor nine chord. You can play it like this. It then starts back around on this F major chord, which again is the four chord. So it's a one, major three, major seven, nine to the C major, which is the one chord. So one, major three, major seven, nine. We then get to this final chord, which is this E major chord. So E major chord at the triad, portion of it it's a one a major three and a five so we're going to take the five we're going to replace it with a seven what type of seven does this chord get well it's not the one chord it's not the four chord of the key so it gets a minor seven so we have our one we have our major third we have our minor seven now we could go ahead and add this nine in here as we have been all along the nine is one whole step higher than the one but keep in mind that if you do that to the three chord, you're going to be introducing another out of key note. If you like the sound of it, that's fine. There's no problem with that whatsoever. Just understand that you will be introducing an, another out of key note. We already made an alteration to this E major chord because diatonically, the three chord of the key is supposed to be a minor chord. So we've already taken this E minor chord and turned it into an E major chord just because it has a cool sound to it. So instead of E minor, it's E major. All right, the seventh, we didn't do anything to the seventh, regardless of whether we kept it a minor chord or made it into a major. The seventh remained constant either way. If you go ahead and you add in that nine, you're now introducing yet another out of key note. You're gonna be introducing an F sharp into the picture. So what I played here instead is what is known as a flat nine. One less than a nine is a flat nine. That's the note F. And remember, we're in the key of C here. C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. So if you wanna keep the natural nine in there, you're gonna have two out of key notes. You're gonna have that out of key note here, which is the thing that makes it major as opposed to minor. Then you'll have that F sharp there. If you just wanna have one out of key note, then take that F sharp, drop it by one half step, that makes it a flat nine. It's the note F now. So that whole thing with the nine, that's something that only happens with the three chord. So the one chord, the two chord, the four chord, the five chord, the six chord, if you wanna add a nine to any of those chords, which is that note that's one whole step higher than the one, one whole step higher than the root of the chord, the nine is fine. But when you get to the three chord, if you wanna add the nine to the three chord and you wanna add a nine that's going to keep you in key, and you don't want to introduce that out of key note, then it's a flat nine.
All right, so hopefully I'm stressing this point enough about always being aware of the chord's function within the key. This is super, super, super important. Whatever works in one key will work the exact same way in all of the keys. You always know what to do to a one chord. The one chord in its triad form, it's always going to be a major chord. In its seventh form, it's always going to have that major seventh interval added to it. If you wanted to go ahead and add the 9 onto there as well, it's always going to have a 9. It's going to just have that natural 9 that's one whole step higher than the, than the 1. You know your notes of that chord. In the key of C major, the 1 chord is a C. In the key of G major, the 1 chord is a G major. In the key of A major, the 1 chord is the A major chord. So the same stuff applies. If you're in the key of A major, the chord progression is taking place in the key of A major, you're like, oh, there's that one chord, there's that A major chord. All right, in triad form, it's always going to be major. I know that. In seventh form, it's always going to have that major seventh in there because the one chord gets a major seventh interval. Can I add the nine? I don't know. All right, yes, I can because it's a one chord. It's only the three chord that has that funky flat nine if I want to remain in key with the ninth. So... The same thing works for the two chord, the three chord, the four chord, five chord, six chord. You're in the key of C major, an E major chord comes along. You're like, wait a minute, that E major chord, that's not part of the key of C major, but I like the sound of it. What's going on with that? Why is that? Oh, that's the three chord, and you made it into a major chord. That's a very common thing to do. So now you find yourself playing in the key of A major, and in this key of A major, you have your chord progression, but you notice that there's a C sharp major chord in there. You're like, wait a minute, that C sharp major shouldn't be in there. What's up with that? Oh, the C sharp major is functioning as the three chord in the key of A major. It's very common to make the three chord major in any key. We're doing that right here. That's why they did that. Gotcha. Okay, so I want to add a seventh onto there. What type of seventh do I add onto that three chord? Well, I know that only the one chord and the four chord get major sevenths. That's the three chord, so it gets the other kind of seventh. It gets the minor seventh. Got it. So I'm going to play the C sharp 7. I'm going to know why that's there. I'm going to know what type of 7th is on there. I'm going to know why that was made major as opposed to minor. All because I knew that that was the 3 chord of the key. Understand the function of chords within a key. Study one key. It applies to all the keys. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.